Hey folks, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today I'm going to show you how to limit bass guitar for powerful low end. We're going to be talking about limiting bass guitar today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist. It's a simple PDF guide that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at this bass guitar. Let me start by playing you the bass guitar in context with the rest of the track and then we'll solo up the bass guitar and you can hear what it sounds like by itself. And then we're gonna dive into the couple limiters we're using on the DI here and the bus as well. So here is the bass guitar inside the finished mix. This is a heavy instrumental mix here. You can hear our bass parts pretty fast, it's pretty aggressive, um, but it's very, very consistent. Even though we have louder hits here, we got quieter hits here in the middle, it's still very consistent. And that's what we get by using these couple limiters that we're gonna talk about. First limiter we have going here is on our bass DI. Let me solo up our bass DI here. We have the usual suspects here on bass. Uh, EQ, isolating the low end, and then we have one isolating the top end on the amp. So using our low end, or our, excuse me, our DI here for our low end on our bass, that's followed by the limiter here. Our limiter is all the way down, so the presonus limiter goes down to 12, 12 dB with the ceiling. So I pushed in five more dB with the threshold to be doing somewhere around three dB of limiting. I don't usually like to push past three dB of limiting with these limiters. The more you push in, the dirtier it's gonna sound and the more distorted it's gonna sound. You have to be careful, especially with bass, especially with the low end on bass. You don't want to go too far with limiting or compression, otherwise you're going to distort your low end. And you don't want to distort your low end. You can distort your top end, add you know, amp distortion or anything like that to get it to cut through the mix, but you want your low end to be clean, tight, and powerful. Distorted low end is not going to be big. It's going to sound pretty nasty the more you pull it up in the mix. That's going to get messy. So only about 3 dB of limiting here on the bass DI. Let me play you what this sounds like. This is just the DI, just the low end. I'll AB this limiter for you. So just about negative 2.84 dB limiting here on our base DI. I'm gonna pull it further and I want you to pay attention to how our low end changes as we push harder into this limiter, as we do more limiting on our low end. You can hear the harder we push in, the dirtier it starts to sound, the more distorted it gets. It really starts to feel like a speaker farting out. So like a smaller speaker, when you push a lot of low end into it and it can't handle it, it starts to get that like, you know, fart out sound. It starts to distort a little bit like the speaker because the speaker can't handle the low end. That's the same thing that's happening here. We're pushing too much low end into this limiter. It can't handle it. It can't contain it in the proper way. So it starts to distort, it starts to fart out a little bit. And it doesn't take much. We went all the way down to uh, 
about 10 with our threshold here, so doing about 7 or 8 dB of limiting, and it's really started to distort and uh, crap out there. But even at 5, like 5 dB reduction, it, you could hear it starting to crack up and break up and get nasty sounding. So you got to be careful. That's the trick here. We're going to use multiple limiters. So we got one on our DI. You saw there was a couple on our amp. A little bit more on our amp because our amp had some uh, high-end pokes that came out a couple times in the mix. So just using them in series there. But we have one here on our DI helping to hold, hold our DI in place. And then we have another one here towards the end of our chain on the bass bus doing another 2 to 3 dB reduction. So again, not crazy, just using our limiters in serial like this in order so we can hold our bass in place without it getting too crazy, without getting too distorted or too messy sounding. Now we're going to put both in, so our DI and our amp, sending into our bus here, and I'll AB this limiter for you. So same thing, our ceiling's all the way down at negative 12. We're using our normal attacks, we're not going too fast, and we're not going too slow, so that when we do limit, we're not getting too much transient, or we're not squashing our transient. When they're going really fast like this, you want some of that pick attack, but you don't want your limiter to be so slow that it emphasizes that pick attack, and then you get like a really attacky sound. Otherwise, we're going to neuter some of our low end. Low end's going to travel longer than our top end attack is. So you want to be right in the middle, not too fast, not too slow. And then our release is also up at 100 milliseconds here on both of them. So a slower release, so it's not letting go right away. It's not too fast, not too aggressive here on either limiter. Here's the limiter on our bus. Like I said, same ceiling, negative 12. Just pulling our threshold back to negative one here, just so it's pushing a little bit further into our limiter. It's just a little bit further than this one, right? This one's at negative 12 and we went up five dB. We pushed five dB in to get two or three dB of compression. And then we stack our amp on top of that so we can set our ceiling at the same place and just push a little bit more into it to get some of that limiting, get some of that compression there. Take a listen, this is the DI and the amp pushing into this limiter. You can hear across the board here, it keeps our bass very consistent, but it's not too aggressive sounding. We have some aggression from the way the bass was performed and from our amp sound here, but we're not distorting our low end and we're not distorting the bass as a whole. There's no distortion being added here. Now we'll do the same thing we did on our, our DI. I'll pull the threshold down, listen to how our entire bass sound changes as we push harder into the limiter. I'm gonna do that one more time. I want you to focus on what makes it through all the heavy limiting. When we pull the limiter down, what frequencies survive it or stay mostly intact? Which ones get squashed? Pay attention one more time here. Coming off of that, our top end stays semi-okay. It's a more aggressive bass tone, so we don't notice the distortion that we're getting from our top end by pushing into this limiter. What you do notice that starts to distort, starts to fart out, starts to get messy, is your low end. The harder we push into the limiter, the more our low end kind of gets loose sounding and it's messy sounding. It doesn't stay tight. It doesn't stay powerful anymore. Right here at just about two to three dB of limiting, our low end is still big, it's still powerful, and it's not messy. It's nice and tight and huge, right? No distortion, no farting out, no, no, no bad speaker sounds coming from pushing that hard into the limiter. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off both limiters and put them back in so you can hear the difference that these two limiters make consistency wise and frequency or tone wise. Start with out and then I will kick them both in. You can hear when we put the limiter in on our DI, you'll hear how consistent our low end gets because we're limiting our, our DI, which is our low end signal. We have that EQ on there isolating our low end. And then when we throw the limiter in on the bass bus, so the bass sound as a whole, you can hear how consistent our bass volume gets and how balanced our tone gets. So we have our low end consistent and we have our balance going on here. So our, our DI signals are low end, our amp signals are top end, doing a little bit of balancing just with the faders. And then when we do that two to three dB of limiting on our bass bus, it helps to balance out and round out our bass tone as a whole. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.